you know, you talked about Harry Belafonte, Mr. B. What, what type of person was he in real life? Because you and you have this extraordinary career, and you just are rambling off names that from us on the outside, these names have shaped culture. They 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 have defined not just parts of our life, but parts of the fabric of the life that we get to enjoy. And Mr. B himself, I mean, did this guy was there during the um civil rights movement. He and I love people like him who were so yeah. bold. Uh they they, they made yeah. it. They made it. They 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 were the good him and Dick Gregory, you know he he had the curly yeah. hair him Dick Gregory and Simone and, and, um um I was the youngest member of the Better Fund the Singers let me explain the Better Fund the Singers were twelve guys right whom Harry managed mm -hmm. they didn't sing with him all the time he managed them and sent them around the country singing folk music. There were six white guys, six black guys. He did have four guys who always sang with him, right? But on special occasions, like if he sang at the Palace in New York City or at the Hollywood Bowl uh, here in L.A., then everybody would be behind him, okay? So I was with this particular group that he sent around. That's what he said. Secondly, um, this was the third group he had formed. So I was the youngest member of the third group, and I became a member in 1959. And I was there until 1968. Um, and I was a singer arranger with him, although I must confess, the competition is very fierce between the arrangers. So they only, I only managed to get one of my arrangements done. But Harry himself was one of the most important figures in the civil rights movement. He was always there to speak yes, and support um, Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy, but he also gave his money as well. So financially and in terms of his figure himself, he was always there. And he can truthfully say that the movement had one of its main supporters. In my opinion, my opinion without him, you can't say that it would have been successful without him or people like him. Uh, but my knowing him, I was the youngest member. Okay, so I don't really know him. I was in his presence a lot all the time when he, you know, but I, I knew him more, a lot from just that, but I knew him as much from what I was looking at on TV too. So I wasn't like a personal, like that kind of a friend of his, but I was worked for him and was definitely in the presence of uh, uh, Mr. B a lot where he would, you know, check us out and talk to us. You know, you, you're born, what'd you say, 1937? Yeah. February 1st. You, you have outlived so many of your counterparts, so many of your peers. Uh, obviously, Mr. B passed away earlier yeah, this year, yeah. I believe. You're seeing all of your brothers and sisters that you came up with, some of which were older than you. We also know, I think Richard a week Roundtree. or two ago, Chef yeah. himself, Richard Roundtree, passed away. Uh, you know, Check your I'm not sure. <laughs> there you go. These are, these are guys, they were right there with you. When, when you hear that these guys are leaving here, I mean, and, and it's not just the guys. I mean, obviously, in the last year, Tina Turner, she she's passed on. One of my um, favorites. One of my favorites. Of them. One, two, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, man. Uh, there's an old joke which nobody laughs at now. The joke went, like it's hard to get out of here. Yeah. 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 Uh, the best thing you can do is live this life as well as you can, as happily as you can. Try to make as few mistakes as you can. I've made a lot. Um, and, you know, just have us, in my opinion, the only 
attitude you can have about like death is acceptance. Uh, I hate people talking about fear in death. What the fuck does fear in death do? Something that stop me from dying. If it stopped me from dying, I'd be fearing 100% every day. But this is a process. And if you deal with the scientific thing about molecules and atoms, we never, the molecules and atoms never are destroyed. Uh, our ice, is, ice is made of molecules and atoms. But when it melts into water, the ice isn't gone. The molecules and atoms have shifted, changed their dimension. When you put that same water on a pot, on a hot stove, it changes the steam. The water isn't going to simply change. We as well will simply change on a physical level. Now, I don't know. I'm believing and hoping there's something else going on that a little fraction of me that will, you know, that's been inhabiting this body. But in terms of molecules and atoms, basically to say we end is not a correct statement. We don't end. We simply change dimension. We transform to something else. So with that as my belief, I am ready, you know, not now, not now, okay? okay. <laughs> I'm ready to transform because I know one day that transformation will, will happen. So I think the best attitude you can have with death is acceptance that it will have and try to be as happy, you know, and, and as you can until that happens. And not be fearing it all the time because you think you're going to hell and all that. Oh, nah, 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 nah. I mean, for me, I know there are a lot of dedicated Christians who believe that. For me, that's putting a lot of worry on you. Okay. As a Buddhist, I'm an agnostic. You know what that means. It means not that I, not that yes, I don't believe yes. that God exists, just that I have made up my mind what it is or who it is or why it is because, uh, that books written by human beings that say we're made in God's image. Well, that's ego trip on a part of a human being. There's a lot of things out here that supposedly God created, which don't look like human beings. Why can they be a tree like in Star Wars? Why, do, why can they be some other form? You know, he's God, right? He doesn't have to be like that, right? Yeah. He could be a thing. He could be whatever, you know? Uh, so for me, if in fact you even deal with the concept of God, there's no way that I believe that God made himself in the image that I'm in. Why does he have to have done that? If in fact God exists, for me, the agnostic thing for me makes more sense. I don't know what it is. I haven't made it in my mind yet. Okay. It's not, I think it's arrogant to be, uh, um, someone who's declared, you know, absolutely what God is to how he puts on his tie, what shoes he wears, you know, the boogers in his nose, okay? Or, for that matter, to be an atheist and say, you know, absolutely, that doesn't exist. How do you know atheist? For me, for me, the most humble thing way I can do with this is to understand that I am here and I don't really know about whether that's True or not. We as human beings are like grains of sand. We are, in my opinion, in a situation where we ought to realize that there's a kind of insignificance to us. It shouldn't be filled with ego and hubris because we can, you know, outthink some other animal. But there's a lot of things that other animals have that we don't have. An eagle can see a, a fly from a mile up, okay? A dog and a cat, you sitting there reading the newspapers, they'll go to the door because somebody in front of that door that you don't even know is there. For me, there's a whole way in which human beings deal with themselves that is more um, arrogant than it should be. Because if you deal with, if Neil deGrasse Tyson, whom I love, is correct, then we have billions of galaxies. And dealing with a whole molecule atom thing, that means we have countless molecules and atoms of which we are part of that trip, which means that in terms of the billions of galaxies, we're, we're not even like grains of sand, man. 
you know, right. you know, in that process, right. we are not even like grains of sand. We should be very humble about being, like I said, because out of the quadrillions and more of human beings that exist, we are lucky enough to come out this way. Because in every scrotum, there's about two or three thousand of sperm that didn't make it. Okay. So by the time you cut out the trillions of human beings who have been born and have children, you have just uncountable numbers of human beings who could have existed. You know, so you should be feel grateful, lucky, and in my opinion, humble about even being here as you are. I don't know what the original question was, but I think I went out about it. No, you you answered the question perfectly. You answered the question absolutely perfectly. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.